Last week, Canada's Competition Commissioner released a review of the competitive landscape in Canada, and the news wasn't good. On every measure, competition is down from high concentration to few new entrants to high prices. So what can we do to improve that? Melanie Aiken was Canada's Competition Commissioner from 2009 to 2012 and is now co-head of the Competition and Foreign Investment Practice at Bennett Jones. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure to be here. So let's start with your reaction. Were you surprised that competition is bad in Canada? Well, not surprised by the report. I continue to be a bit depressed by it, of course, but it's certainly consistent um, with the findings, you know, the signals we've had, the report cards we've been getting, and certainly the Canadian experience over the last number of years, which is getting worse. I think what was disappointing about the report is it didn't really offer much by way of recommendations. Advocating for a whole of government an approach doesn't really advance the ball. Uh, using the findings as an excuse to make it easier for the commissioner to win cases isn't really apt. Likewise, this notion of having market studies bogging down the bureau that are politically directed, I don't really think is a huge positive. Uh, but no, not surprised, um, but continue to be disappointed, of course. Mm -hmm. One one place that obviously we, we're seeing action is changing how mergers will be approved. This, uh, you know, the test of whether a merger is good or not on the efficiencies basis, which uh, which Canada has used in the past now may change. Is that enough or is the kind of horse out of the barn on mergers? We already have heavily concentrated industries. Well, to be honest, the problems that are identified in that report are not going to be fixed by the kinds of things that were respectfully um, suggested by the government. I mean, getting rid of the efficiencies defense is hardly very closely associated with food prices, which is what they hung it up on. Uh, sending politicized market studies to the Bureau, which is supposed to be enforcing the law, but will now be doing market studies. Again, I don't see as at all a positive. I don't think it's the right place for those to be. So, uh, you know, these changes are kind of what was already on the table, probably easy to grab and put into a media statement and announcement and suggest that something was actually going to change. But it's an illusion that those things are going to change it. Orchestrating a perp walk of CEOs for the media isn't going to change anything. Finger wagging isn't going to change anything. Likewise, the moral sort of high handedness of this isn't going to change anything. We need real change. And there's things we could be doing, but we're not doing them. What would be on that list? And would foreign competition be high on the list? Well, to be honest, I think there's kind of twin things. The key is smart deregulation, which takes courage. Uh, and it's hard, admittedly, for politicians to do because they live in a much shorter time cycle. But if you want to be courageous, you do things like dismantle supply management, which controls the prices hmm. of our dairy, our chicken, our eggs, our maple products, uh, things that really affect Canadians in their day-to-day -day lives and particularly disproportionately affect those with uh, fewer resources. Uh, foreign investment restrictions. Why aren't we really open for business for foreign investment? By keeping those uh, restrictions high in telecom, in airlines, in banks, those are the things that affect Canadians in their day-to-day -day life. We could be doing a lot to do to change that. Why do we have state-owned enterprises in alcohol uh, and in uh, CBC? I mean, we really need to open up mm -hmm. our market if we actually want to experience the positives of competition. We have to leave it there, Melanie. It's great to have you with us for this. Really appreciate your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Melanie Aiken was Canada's Competition Commissioner from 2009 to 2012. She is co-head of the Competition and Foreign Investment Practice at Bennett-Jones. Time for the takeaway and how to avoid a messy divorce. The province of Alberta is threatening to try to withdraw from the Canada Pension Plan. And as much as the rest of the country might like to wish this away, ignoring the message from the province is a bad idea. Like any marriage, the country of Canada is bound by sentiment and also by contractual obligation. Sometimes the goodwill seems in short supply, especially between the federal government in Ottawa and various provinces. Misunderstanding, miscommunication, anger and disappointment are all part of the package. But just like a marriage, it's the tough times that make the contract so important. That it is hard to dissolve helps everyone stay focused on how important it is. In the case of the Canada Pension Plan, the well-funded and well-managed investments serve all Canadians. Splitting it into pieces isn't likely to improve the performance. The sum of the parts here really is greater than the whole. Alberta may also have an overblown idea about its entitlement if indeed it was to succeed in pulling its share of the CPP out of the hole. And like any messy divorce, it would be a matter settled by lawyers and courts over time, which is hardly a process that lends itself to good feelings between the participants. But maybe instead of getting overly defensive about the CPP, Ottawa and the rest of Canada should try to hear what's really being expressed. Frustration and a sense of isolation on Alberta's part for a start have surely led us to this place. What might the feds do differently to try to change that point of view? 
Stonewalling and hoping the situation improves rarely works and might just cause even more alienation. My takeaway? Albertans may be feeling like Canada takes them for granted. Rather than fighting over the furniture, a better plan might be to actually address their concerns. That's Taking Stock for this week. I'm Amanda Lang. Thanks for being with us.